Hey y'all, welcome to the Walk for Change short. Hi, this is Joe Grumbine here and I'm here with Wendy Love Edge and um, she's a, an expert in food as medicine and she's <laughs> a, uh, uh, an occupational therapist and she's got a wealth of experience and we're going to be talking today a little bit about food and medicine and the Walk for Change and um, you know, in my thinking that this whole effort is a medicinal effort. It's a, it's an effort to, to fix things, to heal our condition. Um, and food's a big part of that. You know, we're, as we finally do get on the road and begin walking, um, you know, we're all going to be eating and we're going to be expending a lot of the calories um, and, and putting our bodies through some rigors. And, as you know, most of the people that seem to be involved with the with with this movement, I don't know. I think it's probably every movement, but there's always people that have issues, physical issues. Um, I don't know what causes broken people to want to fix things, but we're all we all got issues. I have some lung lung issues I've had all my life, and and, and just about everybody that's involved with organizing the Walk for Change has some kind of a physical ailment issue or, or, or condition. And um, I don't know, let's talk about um, of food and, and the importance of, of. Sure. Yeah. Well, so I, I was an occupational therapist for 25 years. And um, when I was in college, I went to Boston University. I saw how the system kind of changed from a health, really a healthcare system to a business, truly a business, right? And then um, how that was implemented. And, um, and I was a part of that, you know, I worked for a rehab company, I drove the numbers, we looked at people's insurance to determine that part of, part of the determination for their length of stay, all these things, right? And so for me, I have to sometimes, I think, be kind of hit over the head <laughs> to say, you know, to really see the problems, you know, I can see them, but I'm, I'm not seeing it clearly. Um, and so in 2011, I got really sick with a disease called dermatomyositis. I got it from taking a pharmaceutical drug, uh, uh, which was a statin drug, which many, many people are on. And um, I quickly ended up on 16 pharmaceuticals in a power wheelchair, couldn't care for myself, right? And I never really thought of food as medicine, exercise as medicine, positive thinking as medicine, community as medicine. But all of those things are. And when you become ill in this country, you quickly lose a lot of those medicines. You don't have as much contact with your community. People kind of are really interested in helping in the beginning, but then as human nature goes, they kind of back up a little bit and, and you feel really alone. Um, and, and so you've lost that community. You can't move your body like you used to. You can't even choose and cook your own food necessarily, depending on how sick you are. And all of these things which create health and wellness are now removed. And the initial problem, the initial illness that started the problem becomes bigger and bigger. And um, you know, I was in pharmaceutical overload and they told me I was gonna die and I probably would have if I followed their plan to the, to the end. But um, after a couple of years of being really what I call bulldozed on all this pharmaceutical drugs, um, I kind of had an awakening and an epiphany where I, you know, heard this voice saying, your body knows how to heal itself, something I already knew, you know, <laughs> um, and that started my journey to improve my health and wellness. And it was cannabis that, that helped me to come off of all those drugs, um, which those are drugs, things like cannabis and food are, are medicine, right? There's a difference there. And I saw it very clearly as I started to heal. But I realized that cannabis really wasn't the whole story. It's a very important piece and it creates homeostasis and all health benefits can come from that, right? But we have to, we have to make choices about our health to, to stay on that healthy and wellness um, curve that's going up. And that means positive attitude, um, staying in touch with your community, not feeling, making yourself so isolated. Um, nutrition, so nutrition and food became 
also a really important medicine for me. And so it's from my personal experience, I started to notice, you know, if I eat lots of sugar and white flour, I'm going to have more pain and feel lousy, right? And it's going to affect all the different illnesses that they're telling me I have, which are really oftentimes created out of imbalances in your system, not doing the right things for your own wellness. And, um, and also another, um, you know, right now we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? But there's another pandemic too. There's probably several, but this one is something that's really important and that's trauma. There's so many people that have been traumatized. It's at pandemic proportions and people are behaving and making choices out of their trauma. So, um, so there's so many pieces of this, you know, I kind of keep talking and talking. I'll let you ask me a question. How about that? <laughs> well, I, you, you brought up some really good points and I think it's important for people to understand that all of these things are intertwined. You know, the walk for change is not a single issue event. In fact, it's not even a single event event. And right. it's, it's, it's all about healing our condition, healing the world, healing us as humanity. And there's so, it's a big job, you know, there's a lot of things to do. But I think one of the things to, to be mindful of is that everything's connected. And mm -hmm. when you talk about, um, you know, the difference between a drug and medicine, um, I wonder if there's, a, if there's a, a clear definition of that. But in my thoughts, it would have to do with harm reduction, with the potential mm -hmm. to cause harm. And, yes. and so if something might help you but couldn't hurt you or, or certainly couldn't very easily hurt you, you would maybe think it was more medicinal. And if it was something that would maybe have a profound effect on you, but certainly could hurt you, maybe we would might call it a drug. And I don't know if that's, you know, really a scientific classification, but it's kind of a, a common sense one. But, you know, you've brought up some really good points about um, all of these parts are being so are, are so intertwined, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that um, this event as a group of people gathering together, each with their own motivation mm -hmm. to be part of it and each with their own causes to change. Um, and then looking at all the ways that we can do it, I think um, supporting each other and, and, and raising up our, um, our spirits and our health. I, I think all of that's very intertwined. What are your thoughts about, you know, just the health of all of that? Right. Well, it, it raises a vibration. You know, you were talking in the beginning about how many people who come to this are people who have a lot of illness. And that includes me, four autoimmune diseases and all these issues. But what I've, what I've found is by creating community, gathering with people, figuring out how I can help and what they need. And they do the same many times. Um, it, it just raises the vibration. So an event or several events like this, how much will it raise the vibration on the planet and get people to really understand that we have to be the change. We have to look at all of these subjects that we talked about, like you said, as connected um, things that's not just isolated you know food is not isolated for improving wellness it's a really important component it will build health or illness depending on what you choose and but the problem with that is that it's a very classist system and the healthier food the organic food food that's uh, you know um, that's going to create health is more expensive even products that are good for us that don't contain chemicals that will harm us are more expensive. And so, you know, I see people when I'm out and about, you know, right now we're all in our homes. And my hope is that everyone is reflecting on a lot of these issues. Um, we're all wondering how we're going to get food from the market when we can't leave the house. And the, the delivery systems are all backed up because many, many people are doing that. And so people, for the first time, maybe, are looking at, well, it's spring. How about we plant some seeds, you know? <laughs> and maybe they hadn't thought about that in a long time because they were working three jobs, overstressed, still couldn't make ends meet, and oftentimes buying food, processed food, at the dollar store or through a drive through creating more illness, you know? So like you said, it's all interconnected. And in this time frame right now, people are, are 
given a space to reflect, to think about things, to make um, more positive decisions for themselves and their family. I don't know if we can go back to where we were. And I think this walk for change is gonna come at a perfect time when people have had this time and space to think about these things. And, and you know, maybe it's not so much going back to where we were, but maybe going back or, or being able to use those tools that we used to have and, mm -hmm. and do it here and now. I think that, you know, um, one of the pieces that is missing from a lot of people, especially when you have uh, trauma, I've, I've had all kinds of trauma in, in my life. Mm -hmm. I've been raided, I've been injured, I've had all kinds of things happen. And, and one of the things- you're, you're not alone. It's, when you start to really talk to people, I challenge you to find a person who has not suffered some type of trauma. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I think that one of the things um, that this Walk for Change is, is doing, bringing people together in a community, that's healing by itself because we're, we're social beings by our nature. And there's something healing about the connectivity of, of just talking to somebody, um, even, even electronically. I mean, obviously, it's better <coughs> to do it in person, but there's something, you know, just having this a conversation right now is healing to the spirit. But I think another thing that sometimes maybe gets underrated or, or, or not brought into this picture is, is a purpose. Um, I've, I've had the experience in working with cannabis for 30 years, and I don't consider myself a medical professional, but I'm, I, 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 I'm somebody who, who does things. And I've, I've spent a lot of time with a lot of sick people and, um, especially things like cancer and really, you know, dire situations where people feel like they're, they're doomed, you know, they're, they're sentenced to death. And mm -hmm. there's something about um, a purpose. Like if you can get somebody to say, you know what, you're willing to fight because then all of a sudden you have a purpose. And then right. all of a sudden you can start talking about those things that you brought up, you know, like, like uh, the positive mental attitude and eating right and sleeping mm -hmm. right and, yeah, and, and, and all of these things as as tools to help you to 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 overcome this situation, right. whatever it might be. Right, and and in there change. in there is the pharmaceutical part of it too. You know, people, many people are on pharmaceutical overload. So many side effects and interactions, and so doing a review of what you're putting in your body, having the conversation with your doctor about each medicine or each drug. I, I don't consider necessarily a lot of it to be medicine. It's got it because there, like you said, there's the other side of it that can have harm. I'm not saying it's all bad. There's some that's definitely necessary. I still take some pharmaceutical drugs, but it's with a lot of thought and review. And so I think that's another piece of it. Um, but when we get together in the purpose of making change, we can have all these conversations with people and people realize we're more alike than we are different. And we're, we're, you know, we're all under a lot of these same conditions where we may not feel that we're very empowered when the truth is we really are. <laughs> that's one, th that's the biggest thing that I learned. Really that empowered. You're absolutely right. And I, I believe very strongly. I mean, that's why, you know, I've been so, uh, ardent uh, a supporter of this is because I see what it can do like if mm -hmm. we can just get in our heads and in our hearts that we can do this we can do anything we want if we just yeah. put our minds together and, and 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 make that decision well we're running short of time here but I'd like to just get one last kind of thought from you as as we're going to be walking literally 3,000 miles across this nation um, and and you know we're going to be eating along the way um what are your what's your thoughts and recommendations about you know maybe the best way to, to approach that yeah well i think there's a few things firstly always pack a bag of healthy things for you and bring them with you now that said for some people they might be are some people going to do the whole walk or are people doing parts of it i guess some people will do most the whole people thing. are going to be doing parts of it there's a few people pledging to do the whole thing. But for the most part, everybody's going to be doing 
what they can walk in five, 10, 20 miles, walk in a day or two or three days and then, you know, right. back, back and on. So I think, I think definitely bring your own snacks and, and food, uh, you know, with some sort of a cooler, um, bring plenty of water with you. Hydration is so important, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of walking, but really you're supposed to drink half of your body weight in water every day anyway. So on a walk like that, you need even more than that. So, you know, I can picture people like toting big jugs. Of water. I don't know. <laughs> um, we'll have support vehicles and, and, okay. and people along the way that'll be helping out. That's part of the, the whole team in this. Right. And I think connecting with healthy local restaurants along the way and finding out what they're willing to offer. Um, you've got to, you know, you're coming through a specific town or city, you know, check out what local, um, organic restaurants, uh, responsibly sourced restaurants, let them know, hey, be, be a part of the Walk for Change, we're coming through, what can you offer um, some of our people that are coming through? I think that is continuing to create community all the way, all the way across, you know? Um, and, and really think about your choices, you know, especially if you're gonna be walking like that, but in general anyway, you know, just, don't buy fast food. If it's fast food, make it, you know, rice and beans um, or something, you know, that you could get um, pieces of fruit. You know, it depends on what your needs are. Like I, for instance, can't eat fruit, which is horrible. <laughs> I miss it, but it was making me sick. So I, I stopped eating all of it. Um, so I think knowing before you embark on something like this, knowing what your considerations are for food and sticking to it please stick to it because you don't you know people getting sick along the way will be really difficult um i'm sure everybody will support you productive as well i'm sure yeah right <laughs> but those are some recommendations i have for sure excellent well wendy it's been a pleasure speaking with you on this i look forward to to, to continuing this journey and um, i'm looking forward to uh this walk for change happening thank you for joining me today Thank you so much. And remember, it's www.walk4change.us.